Now in this real SAT problem, you given the expression over here, this intimidating expression and ask which of these answers is equivalent to this expression. So anytime you see this word equivalent, just set X to be equal to zero. When you set X to be equal to zero for this guy, this X and this X cancels out and you're just left with one over half plus one third because this X and this X is gone. So this term simplifies further to one over half plus one third gives you three plus two over six. So you get five over six and that simplifies further to six over five. So now we've reduced this term to a simpler, a simpler number here, which is six over five. Now the next step is to set X to be equal to zero in all of these choices. So just cancel out all of the X terms, we've got five over six here. You cancel out this X term and there you go. You got six over five, giving you B as your correct answer. Now you try to solve a very similar problem here. Remember the hint is instead of this problem, I'm gonna give you another problem. The problem is right over here. One over X plus two minus one over X plus three. So solve this problem. The answer choices are still one of these. So substitute X equal to zero and post your answer in the comments below. Pause this video for just a few minutes or seconds and see how quickly you can get this answer. Let's move on to the next hack. Now in this hack, you're asked to find W in terms of A. You're given A is equal to something and you're asked what is W equal to. Again, use the same idea. Let's just substitute A to be equal to zero here. You can ignore this formula for now. It's not important for this question. When you put A is equal to zero, you get zero is equal to four plus W over 30, right? And then you can simplify this, right? Is 30 goes over here, so you get four plus W is equal to zero, or that means zero W is equal to negative four, right? Now, just try all of these choices and see which of these choices satisfies this answer. So when you put A is equal to zero here, when you put A is equal to zero here, you immediately get W is equal to negative four. So this is a possible answer. When you put A is equal to zero inside here, you get W is equal to four, so that's clearly gone. When you put A is equal to zero here, you get W is equal to 30 times negative four. That's clearly not negative four, right? So that's why this is gone. And similarly, this is gone as well. And that's why A is your correct answer. Now you try a very similar problem here. I'm gonna give you another, another equation here. Instead of this, instead of this formula, we're gonna use another formula. So this is the this is the formula you can work off of. A is equal to W minus 120 over 30. So same idea, substitute A is equal to zero here, find the W's and check which of these answers. Again, these choices are the same. So post your answers in the comments. Remember, posting your answers will really help you remember all of these strategies. All right, let's move on to the next problem here. This is a linear tables type of a problem. Here you're given it's a linear function. This, this is a linear uh, table. All you've got to do here is find the slope here. Remember F, you can get rid of this F and it's actually just Y here, okay? So one comma five and three comma 13. I'm just gonna write these two numbers here and just find the slope, super easy. You know the slope is gonna be 13 minus five over three minus one, right? Which is equal to eight over two and is equal to a four. Now this is your slope, right? And you just look for any of these numbers here and you can immediately see that four is the slope and this gives you your correct answer. Now you try this particular problem. I've changed the problem here. I'm gonna change the problem. I, let's, let's put in the numbers here as five, 11 and 17. So now you try the problem again. The answer is going to be one of these. So post your answer in the comment section and I look forward to your answers. Remember posting your answers is really going to help you understand the problem. Let's move on to this question. Now you're given the mean score of eight players in a team is 14.5. You know, mean is equal to the sum divided by the total, right? Now 
you're told that one of these, so there are eight people out of these, one is removed, so there were eight originally, and then one is removed, and then there's seven remaining. The average of eight is given to be 14.5. Now one is removed, and the average of the seven remaining players is 12. So what do you do over here? You take this eight and you multiply, you literally multiply it with this 14.5 to, let's, let's use our calculator here, eight times 14.5 gives you 116. Now, you multiply this number, you get 116, seven times 12, you know is 84, and you simply take the difference between that. So 116 minus 84 gives you the value of 32, and that's your answer. That's your answer. So now you try this problem and I'm gonna change the problem. Uh, try the same strategy here, but instead of eight players, you've got 10 players. Let's make it 20 players here. 20 players with um, points, average of 10 points. And then one of the players is removed, so you've got 19 players now with an average of let's say nine points. So now find the highest score this way, all right? 20 players with 10 points and 19 players with nine points, all right? Post your answer in the comments. That's important for you to learn this trick, okay? Let's try this next trick here. You're given all of this big data and they're asking you which of these numbers is 19% of this number. The simple trick over here, pause this video and see if you can solve it, but you just asked which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of the survey respondents. Most people will take this number and divide it by this, then they take this number and divide it by this. But the shortcut here is to look at this 19%. You've got 19%, which is 0.9, and you multiply it by 310. And then again, let's use our calculator, 0.19 times, because this is a calculator section problem, and then you get is equal to 58.9. Now just search for which number is very close to 58.9. 58.9 is roughly 59. And so this number is gonna be our answer, which is males with geometry. So that gives us C as our correct answer. Now, you try the same problem here, but instead of 19, I'm changing the problem here to 14, okay? So the find out which of these categories is 14%. Okay, super easy. It's gonna be one of these choices. So I look forward to your answer. Post them in the comments because that's really gonna help you understand this question. Last of these hacks, back solving. Super, super important. So what you gotta do here is you're asked which of these X terms satisfies this equation. And of course, when you multiply it, you have to use a quadratic, etc. but they've actually given you the answers. So why not plug them in, but you have to plug them in very intelligently, okay? Very, very efficiently. So start with this number zero and see if it satisfies this equation. So let's put zero in here to get zero divided by zero minus three. And is equal to, is it really equal to two times zero over two? Right, so you've got zero over negative three, so you got zero over negative three here, and you got two times zero is zero over two, so zero over negative three is zero, and zero over two is zero, right? So they actually tie out, which means zero is one of the correct choices, right? If zero is one of the correct choices, that means C and D are clearly gone, because there's no zero in here, right? It has to have a zero. Now you've got to just check which of these two is the correct one. So you can simply plug in, you can simply plug in, let's plug in, uh, two over here, right? Let's plug in the first one, so you know this is zero. Let's plug in two over here, you've got two over two minus three, which is your left-hand side, and is equal to two times two over, do you remember we are trying to plug in the value of two over here inside x, so you get one, sorry, two over negative one here on the left-hand side, and you've got four over two, which is just two. So you get negative two. Is it really equal to two? It's not equal to two. And so that's why this answer is incorrect. And B is your correct choice. You can, of course, plug in four inside here and see that this is indeed the correct choice. Okay, now I've got another problem for you. So instead of this problem, try to solve try to solve this particular problem here that I'm, I'm, I've made, made for you. X over X minus one, is equal to 2x over 
six. Again, try to choose the first one, try to see if zero satisfies it, if zero satisfies it, cancel it out, and then try to solve it and find the answer. It's one of these four answers. So again, I look forward to your comments, Put post them in the comments below, but wish you the best with all of these hacks. They're super, super easy to remember and very easy and will save you tons of time on your test. You might save as much as five to six minutes looking in all if you learn these strategies, which can help you to work on some other problems. So I wish you the best and I see you very soon in the next video. So subscribe to this video, subscribe to this channel, and then like this video and I'll see you very soon. All right, bye.